Welcome to EPG Parshala. Dear students, today we are going to discuss on types of biofuel and energy conversion routes from biomass. From this module, you will be able to understand what biofuel is, what are the types of biofuel and what are the different energy conversion routes from the biomass. Biofuel is a liquid, gaseous or a solid fuel that are primarily originated from biomass. They have oxygen levels of 10 to 45 percent while petroleum has none, making the chemical properties of this fuel very different from those of petroleum. Examples are bioethanol, biomethanol, biodiesel, biogas, biosynthetic gas, bio oil, biochar, bio hydrogen, etc. The benefits of biofuel are the energy security, clean and greener fuel carbon trading and it also overcomes socio-economic issues related to the rural sector. Coming to the classification of biofuel based on the source, the biofuel that is derived from the forest biomass, agriculture biomass, fishery byproducts, municipal waste etc are known by their source name. It is also classified based on their state, the physical state like solid pellets, for example, fuel wood, charcoal and wood pellets. Liquid fuel includes ethanol, biodiesel, pyrolysis oil and the gaseous fuel includes the biogas. It is also classified based on its use either in the processed form or in the unprocessed form. If it is used in unprocessed form, it is commonly known as primary biofuel. This is primarily used for heating, cooking or electricity production. It includes the fuel wood, food chips and pellets. These are used yes, in unprocessed form or as such we are getting. The secondary biofuel are generated by processing of the plants or crop biomass. It includes the ethanol, biodiesel, dimethyl ether etc. that can be used in vehicles and various industrial processes. We can classify or subdivide the secondary biofuel further into first generation biofuel second generation biofuel, third generation and fourth generation biofuel. The first generation biofuel are those fuel that have been originated from sources like starch, sugar, animal fat and vegetable oil. Second generation biofuel use cellulosic biomass to liquid technology which includes the bioethanol, biobutanol from the cellulosic biomass. And the main feedstock for the third generation biofuel is algae. The fourth generation biofuel are derived from the biotechnological tools. We can see the secondary biofuel in detail. First, let us see about first generation biofuel. It is produced from cereal crops like wheat, maize, etc. Oil crops like rapeseed, palm oil, sugar crops like sugar beet, sugar cane. So, the conversion of this sugar cane, potato, cassava to biofuel using the established technology comes under the first generation biofuel. The examples of first generation biofuel are bio oils that includes bioethanol, propanol, butanol which are produced by the microbial fermentation of sugar or starch derived from the feedstocks of wheat, corn, sugar beet etc as I told early. Biodiesel which is produced by the trans esterification of the edible oil which is the vegetable oil which are also known as straight vegetable oil like soybean, rapeseed, mustard, sunflower, palm oil etc. The biogas which is from produced from the organic waste also comes under the first generation biofuel. Syngas which is produced by the partial combustion of biomass also an example for the first generation biofuel. Solid biofuels include the firewood which can burn instantly in a stove or furnace also comes under the first generation biofuel. When biomass raw materials like sawdust, wood chips, grass, urban waste, timber or crop residues follows densification and compression into a fuel product which is commonly known as wood pellet, cube or pug also comes under the first generation biofuel. If you look into the pros and cons of first generation biofuel, we can see that these are straightforward and well known production methods are there. They are familiar feedstocks used in the production of first generation biofuel. It is scalable to smaller production capacity, fungibility with existing petroleum derived fuels, experiences with commercial production and use in several countries. But these feedstock compete directly with crops grown for crop food, 
Production byproducts need markets. High cost feedstock lead to high cost production. Low land use efficiency. Modest net reduction in fossil fuel use and greenhouse gas emission with current processing methods. Let's see the second generation biofuel. These are produced from sustainable feedstock. Sustainable means it defined among others by the availability that is highly available. It has limited impact on greenhouse gas emission and invisible impact on biodiversity and land use. These are produced from the cellulosic material, constover, straw, bagasse, forest based. Examples are cellulosic ethanol, biohydrogen, methanol, fissure crops diesel etc. Biofuel based on the use of dedicated energy crops like switchgrass grow on with reasonable inputs and using conversion techniques that provide high net energy efficiency also comes under the second generation biofuel. If we compare the first generation with second generation biofuel, we can say that the first generation biofuel are petroleum gasoline substitute where second generation biofuel are biochemically produced petroleum gasoline substitutes. Example, ethanol or butanol by enzymatic hydrolysis comparable to the ethanol by the fermentation of the starches. The second one is petroleum diesel substitute. Here in the first generation biofuel, the biodiesel is produced by the transesterification of plant oils which are known as the phe or uh, fatty acid ethyl ester which are produced from rapeseed, soybean, sunflower, coconut etc. in the case of first generation biofuel. While in the case of second generation biofuel, these are produced either thermochemically by the fissure drop diesel or by the uh, green diesel non-edible oils are used. For example, Jetrofa carcass, Pungamia pineta, Hevelia brasiliensis and or you can also use base cooking oil for the second generation biodiesel production. So coming to the third generation biofuel, here the feedstock used are microalgae which are sunlight driven cell factories that convert carbon dioxide to potential biofuel. So depending upon species they produce or the microalgae has lipid carbohydrate and protein in it. So this can be used for the production of either diesel from the lipid or carbohydrate is used for the production of bioethanol. But it has some limitation in its cultivation, harvesting, optimization of high density and large surface units of production to the location of this microalgae production unit. And the fourth generation biofuel, these are the biofuel obtained from the conversion of living organism like microorganisms or plants using the biotechnological tools to the energy. Here examples are genetically engineered plants and microbes for the energy production. Based on photobiological solar fuels and electric electrofuel is expected to bring significant breakthroughs in the domain of biofuel. But in the case of this advanced fuel it is still not proven that this has high efficiency can be maintained after scaling up the technology to a large production plant. This is the advancement from the first generation biofuel from the edible crops to the second generation biofuel from the cellulosic crops, cellulosic waste or the residues to the third generation biofuel from the algae and the fourth generation biofuel by the use of biotechnological tools. So let's start with the energy conversion route from the biomass. There are three different processes, thermochemical processes, chemical processes and biochemical processes. Thermochemical process includes combustion, pyrolysis and gasification, while the chemical process includes transesterification process. Biochemical processes are fermentation and anaerobic digestion. So in this diagram you can see that thermochemical conversion routes are combustion, gasification and pyrolysis where in the combustion the steam runs the steam turbine and heat is produced. While in the case of gasification the gas produced is used directly for the heat production or it can be used for the electricity production. Similarly pyrolysis it produces gaseous or the liquid that is bio oil or charcoal which is used for the upgrading and it can produce the biodiesel. In the case of biochemical processes, anaerobic digestion produces the biogas which is a fuel and the fermentation process after distillation ethanol is recovered and is used as biofuel. Similarly, the transesterification process of oil seeds produces biodiesel. So let's see this in detail, the thermochemical process. The first one is the direct combustion. Here the biomass is burned in a boiler to produce high pressure steam. 
This steam is injected into a steam turbine where it flows over a series of turbine blades causing the turbine to rotate. The turbine is connected to the electric generator and the electric generator turns producing electricity. Gasification is also a thermochemical process. Here the conversion of carbonaceous feedstock into synthesis gas or syngas is occurred. The high temperature which is higher than 700 degrees centigrade and a controlled environment lead to practically all the raw material being converted to gas. Gasification takes place in two stages. In the first step the raw material is partly combusted to form producer gas and char. In the second phase the carbon dioxide and water is produced in the first stage are chemically reduced by the charcoal creating the carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The composition of producer gas is 18 to 20 percentage hydrogen an equal portion of carbon monoxide 2 to 3 percentage methane and 8 to 10 percentage carbon dioxide and the residual nitrogen. The third thermochemical process is pyrolysis. Here the degradation of organic matter occur in the absence of oxygen thus inhibiting the complete combustion. In this process biomass is converted into a gaseous mixture which is known as producer gas and it has a combination of methane, mono methane carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Carbon dioxide may also be produced but under the pyrolytic conditions of the reactor it is reduced back to carbon monoxide and water. This water further aids the reaction. So the liquid phase products result from the temperatures which are too small to crack all the long chain carbon molecules so resulting in oil, methanol, acetone and tars. Once all the volatile components have been driven off the residual biomass is in the form of char which is virtually pure carbon. So the products of pyrolysis are bio oil, char and gas. These are of two types fast pyrolysis and slow pyrolysis. If you compare the thermochemical process you can see that fast pyrolysis operates under moderate temperature, short residence time and its major product is liquid product. It also has char and gaseous but the major 175 percentage is the bio oil. While in the carbonation process it occurs at the low temperature and long residence time takes and you can see that the liquid char and gaseous composition is almost equal. While in the gasification it occurs at high temperature and long residence time. Here the major part or the major product is gas which is syngas. So the transesterification process it is a chemical process we will discuss the transesterification process here. Biodiesel can be produced by transesterification process from the different feedstock such as oil feedstock that is vegetable oil or animal fat. This is a process in which the reaction occurs in such a way that the triglyceride present in the fat or oil with reacts with alcohol to form monoalkyl ester and glycerol. You can see in this diagram schematic diagram or you can say uh, the R, R1, R2, R3 which is seen in the triglycerides are the long chains of fatty acid it varies with the oil which we are using as the substrate and you will be getting in this reaction mono alkyl ester if it is ethanol is used you will get methyl ester or if it is um, if it if you are using the methanol you are getting methyl ester if you are using ethanol you are getting ethyl ester this is the this is technically the biodiesel the character of the fatty acids in turn affect the characteristic of the biodiesel so coming to the biochemical process anaerobic digestion it's a series of process in which microorganisms break down biodegradable material in the absence of oxygen. It is a type of fermentation that converts organic material into biogas which mainly consists of methane and carbon dioxide. The digestion process starts with bacterial hydrolysis followed by acidogenesis, acetogenesis and finally the methanogenesis to produce methane and carbon dioxide. Fermentation which is also a biochemical process in this process alcohol is produced by the microorganisms under aerobic condition. Examples are ethanol, butanol and methanol. The microorganisms that ferment the sugar into ethanol are Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is commonly known as the baker's yeast. Pichia stipidis, Candida shihate and Pachisolin tannophilus also used for this fermentation process. You can see here it can be produced from sugar crops, starch crops or silosi crop. 
if it is produced from or if the substrate is sugar it undergoes only the fermentation process no need of pretreatment in the case of starch enzymatic hydrolysis occurs followed by the fermentation in the cellulosic one you require a pretreatment before the hydrolysis and the fermentation so the main part of this is the fermentation by the microorganisms and ethanol is recovered by the distillation process we will discuss about this in detail in the coming modules so to conclude in this module we have learned about biofuel what are the types of biofuel primary and the secondary biofuel how the secondary biofuel are classified into first generation second generation third generation and fourth generation we have also seen the energy conversion routes from the biomass to energy we have seen the thermochemical process which includes the combustion pyrolysis and gasification process in the chemical process we have seen the transesterification process for the biodiesel production in the biochemical process we have seen anaerobic fermentation or anaerobic digestion and the fermentation thank you